No. Action. Hi. My name is Roger Momarts, Jr. And I'm a cancer patient. Formally. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, since it's fresh in my memory, I'm going to recount my experience today in the OR. Um, for awake surgery. Yes, for awake brain surgery. Okay, um, so we had to be here at 5.15 this morning, which is hella early, and um, I only got three hours of sleep because I couldn't sleep at all. Number one, because ha um, Holly's mom was snoring, and, um, but we woke her up twice, and uh, the second time did the trick. Love you, Helen. <laughs> She's right there. Okay. And, um, and, uh, so they took me back at about 7.30, was it 7.30 or 7.45? You got taken back at 7.10. 7, 7.10, she says. Okay. Um, and they rolled me right into the operating room, and um, which was weird because I didn't, never seen an operating room before. And it had these big satellite lights that looked like a UFO and looked like solar panels. I have no idea how they work, but they were interesting. And it was like just a cluster of three of them like you see on TV. And um, they moved me on to the operating room bed, and then the doctor said that he was going to give me the drugs, and I was out. Next thing I know, I'm being um, woken up, and I'm on the operating table. On your and stomach or I, on your back? On my, on my back, and my head is shifted in this position away from my body. Or towards, towards, towards that, st that side, the left side. And uh, I can feel it around my forehead, around my entire head, I have the, the ring. Um, they call it the halo. And it has little um, needles or holders that go into my head. And um, all the way around. And... Um, so I can feel that in my head. And um, the surgeon's trying to wake me up and he's talking to me. And um, after a while, um, I finally come to. And people, I'm awake. Like, not kind of awake, not asleep awake. I'm wide awake, like I am now. And um, this went on for probably about an hour and a half, I think, I was that way. Now, I think he started waking me up 30 minutes before that, but I don't remember a lot of the stuff. Like, he was talking to me and I was responding, but I don't remember. Um, but at that point, they started the surgery. And throughout the surgery, they kept asking me to move my hands. Um, the machines, it's, it's beeping because I'm talking too much. And it wants me to breathe normally. So let me do that for a little while so it shuts up. Um, they, so they asked me to raise my, to lift my foot, and <clears throat> and then they would ask me to, oh, lift my arm, um, like this, and he he would push down on it. I'll look at my uh, IVs and stuff. So I had to lift this arm that has all this stuff on it, and then he would ask me to shrug my shoulders, both of them at the same time. And uh, throughout the surgery, he would give feedback to the surgeon. The anesthesiologist was the one asking me to do these, these things. Um, to the surgeon, the same, no loss of strength, you know, same, he would keep telling him. And I think sometimes, I don't know this for sure, but I think the surgeon was asking him to do it. There's the thing again. <coughs> do -de do Um, they would do those things and I could hear them talking back and forth about things. I could hear the surgeon talking to his assistants and to the nurse for instruments and suction. I could hear this device right behind my head going all the time, which I can only um, imagine was blood um, and other liquids and stuff. And uh, 
And then at one point during the surgery, I, am, I was not able to lift my foot up all the way. And ever since the beginning of the surgery, I wasn't able to move my toes or my ankle. Um, so I think that when they first went in there, I think there was already trauma done that stopped that from happening um, before they even started the surgery. Um, and then uh, there was at one point where my leg wouldn't go up anymore. Um, but then they took these electronic probes. There was, there's two of them, and they set the strength to a certain amount, and then put them on portions of my brain. And um, my hip would move, my, my arm would move, my fingers would tingle. Um, and those were, they were trying to find areas of my brain that were controlling um, certain body parts. And uh, when they were finished, they put, up the, they put the probes on my leg, somewhere on my leg, and it made my entire leg and my foot and my toes all move and curl up. So that tells us that they didn't take that part. It's still there. Um, because right now I can't really move my leg very high and I can't move my foot or my toes or my ankle. Um, so that kind of makes me think that it's going to come back and there's just some swelling right now or it just, you know, it was touched too much and it just needs to rest. And that's exactly what happened the last time. You know, we waited, I think 10 days was the first time we saw um, my thumb move. And it only moved a, like a millimeter or two. And, um, and the doctor also said that don't be surprised if I have less movement tomorrow as, as the swelling picks up. So, you know, right now I can move, I can move my whole arm and, um, really well. You know, I can still move my fingers around a little bit slower and stuff. You know, as opposed to this on my other hand. So it's a little bit slower, and the strength isn't quite what it used to be. Um, but uh, I'm hopeful that it's all going to come back with uh, the therapy in time, and that we're going to be out of here in a few days, like they said. Um, it may be a little less tomorrow if there's swelling, but really, maybe not. I mean, these doctors were amazing, um, fantastic. Their bedside manner was terrific. Um, when we were in the operating room, um, they were asking me questions, and we actually cracked a few jokes. <laughs> Holly, I was trying to sell your, your Jay Hilbert to the doctors, <laughs> and Dr. Lang is actually very interested. So, um, hang on, I'm not dying. Okay. So, um, anyway, it was very interesting, and yes, jokes were cracked, and everybody was laughing, and it was kind of keeping a light in there, and I wasn't nervous at all. There were, I did have, I think, an anti-anxiety drug in me to help me not, you know, but I really need to focus and just, you know, focus on what they were saying and doing. And <clears throat> you want to tell them what you're having for dinner? In a second. Um, well, so when the surgery was finished, they, um, they, uh, I was, they put me back uh, in a little bit of a sleep, and I actually did go down for a while and tell me to get my dog or something. And uh, it was funny because um, one of the nurses reminded me that I was telling them about a dream that I'd had. And um, I apparently, and then after she told me, I remembered that I had several dreams in a row that were very vivid. And the first one was. It's really strange, but like, like just a square size, like a TV screen of like coffee beans moving around. Very vivid, brown coffee beans. <laughs> Holly's making a, 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 a suggestion as though if I was drinking or smoking something. I was on drugs, people. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> then I had another one that was like all greenery, like leaves, not cannabis leaves, like, cause you know, you're saying drugs. And um, like very green, like tree leaves and they were like rustling around or moving in circles. And then I had another one right after that. Now all these were in the same aspect, all in a square. Like I was watching TV, like with the black around them. And then um, another one was like woodwork, like dark woodwork carvings. And there was another one that I know I had, but I can't remember what it was. 
So later on, when the nurse asked me if I remembered, I remembered them. And then the, as, the anesthesiologist said that that's one of the, um, I don't know, I guess the hallucinogenic um, properties of the, one of the drugs that they gave me. So, um, so it worked okay. Um, it was interesting. Okay. Um, and then, um, and then at the end of the thing, um, I also felt them, they brought me back out and I was able to feel, um, um them, um, uh, putting the, my, like sewing the dura back together, which is the covering over the brain. And then I was able to feel them drilling in the screws into my skull to attach the piece that they removed, which is a little weird. But not, there's no pain, because all the pain was numbed. <clears throat> and then... I'm alive, I swear. And then, um... What? Holly's making fun of me. She's doing this number. That's why the camera's moving. And then I felt them sewing up my um, incision. And this time they didn't use staples, they used sutures or stitches, I guess. I don't know if they're the same thing. Um, so it should be a much different incision scar. They also had to make the incision bigger. They used the existing one. So it's gonna be a little different um, in the future. Um, <clears throat> anyway, um, that's about it. They rolled me out. Um, after that, and I was completely awake for that for that part on. They turned the lights on. They took off the coverings of me in the in the, in the OR, moved me to a, a stretcher, and rolled me into the ICU, which is where I am now. And um, now I'm having a wonderful dinner of chicken broth, mixed Jello, cran grape juice. It doesn't stop there, folks. A um, popsicle, packets of salt and pepper, and uh, a bark root beer for later with a glass of ice. So that was my day today. Um, I feel really good. I feel a lot better than I felt um, uh, five years ago during the same procedure. And uh, I'm really hopeful that we'll be out of here in a few days and I'll be um, back to uh, getting rehabilitated at home and to seeing everybody in Austin. Thank you for that prayer. Thank you for the prayers and the thoughts and the support. And um, Talk to you soon. Bye. Yeah.